Hi there, Booktube. It's Roz. Um, it's the first weekend in July, so really time for me to do a wrap up of the things I read in June. Um, I'm not in my usual environment, as you can see. I'm on a weekend away with Tilly of Tilly's Shelf, um, my daughter. It's a sort of Jane Austen themed um, weekend. We're staying just outside Bath and we'll both be do doing some Jane Austen and, and Northanger Abbey related videos. But, um, but putting Austen aside, let me talk about June. So, I uh, sort of set myself a, a more moderate TBR for June and because um, I knew it, for various reasons it was going to be quite a distracted month. And um, I finished nine, month, nine books um, over the course of the month. I, um, four of them have had sort of longer treatment or will do in other videos, so I won't dwell on those four too long. But I was really thinking this month about the way that I rate or rank video um, uh, books because I made a, a video um, based on Emily of Novel Novel's tag about that. And I think I said that in that video that um, I thought that these days the majority of books I read, are, uh, I end up rating as four star. So I thought about that at the end of this month and I had one three star read five four star and three five star and I was thinking yeah I'm, I was about right in how I um how I think that the pattern falls now because if something's going to be much weaker than that I'm probably not going to start it or or you know not not continue with it my three star read may have been a bit unfair okay it was my pride month choice and that was love and other thought experiments by sophie ward now this is a conceptual novel ward was an actress before she was a writer she returned to education sort of later in life and did a phd um which she was awarded in 2019 on the intersection between literature and philosophy and in particular the use of narrative and thought experiments in philosophy and this novel which was published 2020, so, you know, just after she completed her PhD, feels like it's kind of like the fictional flip side of her PhD thesis, in that it's almost, it's about the use of philosophy and thought experiments in narrative. <laughs> um, it's really well written, it's clever, um, but I found it a bit frustrating. Why? Because I got really caught up in the characters at the beginning of the novel. They were so well written, it, their story was so engaging, you know, it's, it's um, uh, uh, you know, two women who were thinking about having a baby and um, one of them, something odd happens to one of them and the, the other one is forced to sort of consider how, how far will you accept something that seems quite irrational in order to keep your partner happy? Great start. But then uh, as she was, each chapter is like another thought experiment. And as that went on, I began to find that a little bit repetitious. And, you know, I, I wanted more of the, the characters and the plot and less of the thought experiments. So I ended up rating it three stars. But another reader would have a different view potentially. And, and even I, that was, you know, it was probably unfair. If you've read it, I would love to hear your thoughts about it and whether it also went downhill for you or not. Everything else I read this month um, was was definitely good. Um, my other deliberate readathon choice was the thing I read for Caribathon, and that was um, When We Were Birds by um, Ayana Lloyd Bamwo. Um, it's an excellent debut novel by um, Trinidadian author. Came out in 2022, you know, it's relatively new. I love the language, um, the atmosphere, the mix of realism, and then sort of the almost fantasy sort of connected almost well connected with sort of legend and myth and 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 uh, sort of spiritual spiritualism ghosts yeah i've made a video about it um and and other writers um that i've read recently from from trinidad and tobago so i won't go on but i would say you know fantastic book definitely you know four stars because it had some of the first novel sort of things that you might expect, but definitely a discovery, and I look forward to reading more by this author. I had a couple of other really straightforward four-star reads, um, you know, just good, sound, enjoyable novels, 
well written for what they were intended. One of those was The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, which came out in 2020. It's historical fiction. It's set in the remote north of Norway in the early 1600s. It's got a really melodramatic plot um, and very strong atmosphere. It starts with a natural disaster, but then it kind of carries on to, I suppose, illustrate how the worst disasters for people are actually generated by other people, um, uh, it, it, often. Um, or the greatest, you know, nature is randomly cruel, whereas people are knowingly so. It gave a really concrete sense of how tough lives were in um, early 17th century north, you know, the far north, um, and also with sort of racial and class and um, religious tensions. The women in the novel are, well, I, it's it's a novel that sets out to sort of, I suppose, uh, show the constraints on, on women at that time in a sympathetic fashion and, you know, absolutely, you know, scored on 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 that it was it was one of those books that's good and enjoyable and engrossing but not amazing like I, I probably won't rush to read another book by Millwood Hargrave even though I enjoyed this one because I can feel like yeah well, I know I know what she does and that's good but you know I've done that one that may be unfair though tell me tell me if I should read more of hers Second of the sort of straightforward four-star reads was Windmill Hill by Lucy Atkins. Uh, that came out in May of this year. So, you know, really new. Again, not mind-blowing, but just this book was tremendous fun. It was a real, you know, romp through, super enjoyable, light-hearted read, but um, with a bit of quality in, in the style and the writing. It's a literary thriller, basically. Um, and I made a video about two newly published novels, um, one of which was this, so I won't go on. But what, what I will say is it, it's a book that managed to end in a warm-hearted way without me finding it saccharine. And that's always a challenge, challenge for a writer. So um, definitely, in that sense, a, a delight. Another book with a a warm-hearted ending that in some ways was even more interesting than Windmill Hill was Co-Wives and Co-Widows by Adrienne Yabuza, translated from the French by Rachel McGill. Now, this was another level of interest for me because it is the first novel translated into English by a writer from the Central African Republic. Absolute gem of a book. Do you know my sort of ongoing um, project to read a book by an author from every country in the world and you know wonderful to find a book to read from the Central African Republic by a woman and a really readable worth reading book I will make a standalone um Scully Daniel video about this one so I won't say more about it um but you know 100% thumbs up the last of my four star reads was the poetry collection I read this month and that was Red Gloves by UK poet Rebecca Watts it's elegant, it's sometimes unsettling in a, in a good way, you know, in a way that poetry can be, you know, as a positive. Um, after I'd read it, I discovered that she generated a storm of controversy back in 2018, I think, by refusing to review for a poetry journal um, Holly McNish's collection Plum. And she said that she she explained why she, she wouldn't review it. And it was because she felt that if she reviewed it, it would suggest that she considered it um, uh, something that should be taken seriously as poetry. Basically, she then sort of tore off Holly McNish, Kay Tempest, um, uh, what is it, Rupi, Rupi, I've forgotten her surname, Canadian Instagram poet, you know, saying they're sort of faux naive and, you know, that it undermines the the, the status of, of of serious poetry to treat people like that as serious poets. Goodness me! Although I probably you know I liked Watts poetry and um, probably preferred it to anything I've read by McNish or Tempest or um, Rupi, whatever her surname is. I'll put it in the notes below. Um, what a kind of patronising! I don't know supercilious attitude to take so I don't know I'd be interested in 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 other people's opinions about that you know do you feel that you know McNish and and and, and Tempest and so on are uh, an, an, an insult to poetry you know surely there's room for 
that variety, you know, the, the, within poet, you know, not every poet has to be Milton, put it that way. That's my opinion anyway. And we have the right to use poetry for the things that we want and enjoy. And so she has the right not to want to read McNish, but to sort of say it can't be taken considered seriously as poetry is seems, yeah, outrageous. So what were my three five-star books that I read in June? Well, they were all great, but wildly different from each other. I'm going to start with the backlist novel I read, which was um, The Girls of Slender Means by Muriel Spark, which was published in 1963. Um, I like to get in a backlist or classic when I can. And I'm so glad I read this one. Um, it's, it, it sort of starts in contemporary London, contemporary when it was written, so, you know, 1963. And a, a missionary in Haiti has been um, murdered. And his his former friends in London come to hear about this. And the sort of the pretext of the book is sort of them almost uh, contacting each other and reminiscing about the events in London in 1944, 1945 that led to him um, turning to religion and, and becoming a missionary and, 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 and so on. And it's, it centres around um, the, the women who are living in the Mayor Tech Club, which is a kind of upper crust hostel for, for ladies working in London who are on limited income and need somewhere respectable to live. OK, and it's the very end of the Second World War. Um, you know, London's been extensively bombed there was that the garden a bomb fell in the garden of the mayor tech club um they're all you know rationing is at its worst they're struggling with clothing coupons and tea rations they're sort of squabbling and bonding with each other and trying to work out you know what their future lives will be and you know do they want to just get married are they going to try and have some sort of career you know all of uh, the men they meet all of all of them one of whom is the the man who later is 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 murdered. It's episodic. It's deliberately sort of non-linear. It's you know it jumps back and forth, but it absolutely sparkles with wit, and the writing is so crisp and so smart. Uh, it was just a delight and a, and a and a rediscovery for me because I read quite a lot of Muriel Spark in my late teens and sort of early twenties, and a I'm not sure I've read anything by her since, and I should read more by her, and I will, and so should you. <laughs> Perhaps you already have. Tell me, tell me your favourites. I know I, I read quite a few um, back in the day. Even more unconventionally structured was the second of my five star novels, and that's Death of the Author in Triptychate by Mark Nash. Now, Mark Nash is a fellow booktuber, so I have you know a sort of a um, sense of goodwill towards um, his writing, but. Um, if I keep returning to his books, and this is the third of his books I have read, it is really because they are linguistically so fantastic. Um, there's a like delicious playfulness with language that he he brings to his writing. I, I, it's a joy to me as a reader. It really appeals to me. Um, you don't come to Mark for for a sort of um, a plot driven novel. That's, you know, if that's what you need, you know, it, that's not what you're going to get. You know, he, 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 he deliberately writes in a sort of um, uh, more about ideas than, than, than plot. It's not things don't happen, but, you know. Uh, characters, characters you do get, and actually they're surprisingly richly drawn for um, writing that's more perhaps about ideas and, and is sort of, and the... Uh, you know, in a sense, this book and all of his books, I think, have a sense of looking at what is reality and and the uh, connections between an author and um, and his or her writing. This, as the title implies, is a book in three parts, and the first part is a, a kind of like in the the realm of crime fiction. You know, it's a it's a, a crime scene and the detective and and really engaging. You get all caught up in it. Um, then it abrupt, abruptly ends, and the second section, or the first person was in, first section was in first person. The the second section is a dialogue, straight dialogue between the 
widow of the detective, who turns out to also be a writer, and uh, his literary agent, like a quarrel over the phone. Very entertaining, sharp, sussy, snappy, back and forth. That ends. Third section is um, in the third person and is um, the author writing about completing a book um, down to, you know, taking the post-it notes with his ideas down off the wall. Um, Now, I thought this book was brilliant and I loved it, but I would hesitate to recommend it to all and sundry. You know, I think if you if you read anything by Mark or you've watched his videos or you've, you know, I hope heard my description, you'll have an idea of whether this is a book for you or not. Okay, but go into it with your eyes open. My third five star read this um, month and the last book that I'm going to talk about in this video is a more straightforward one to recommend because it's one of those books that is both both readable and superb, superbly written. And that's The House of Doors by Tan Tuang Eng. Um, it's new, came out in May. So, you know, uh, I you know, read it when it was newly published. The reason I was so keen to read it was because I, his, I read his book, um, uh, Garden of Evening Mists, which was um, the last thing that he published. And that was just over 10 years ago. And I've been looking forward to reading more by him because that, that novel was sublime. And this one was equally satisfying. I did a new fiction um, video, um, as I say, about um, Windmill Hill and this book. So I won't go into further detail, but um, I've, all, I've noticed it's becoming a bit of a, a, a booktube darling. A number of people have talked about how much they've enjoyed it. And I think that is completely, completely fair. Um, you know, Tan Tran N is such a good writer and I can wholeheartedly yeah recommend him to all of you so that was my June I hope your June was equally satisfying I'm really enjoying my July with lots of Jane Austen in it and uh, I'll be back soon with more probably Austen related uh, stuff see you soon